this video moves on from two-way selection statements to focus on multiple selection statements. Here is a switch case statement in C++. We read in a number, and then we have the keyword switch, which identifies the variable that is under consideration. Then we have several specific cases. This could be represented using if and else if keywords if we check for equality with each of these individual cases. If x is equal to 0, then we will execute this code. If x is equal to 1, then we will execute this code, and so on. We can see if I run this code that if I enter the number 0, it prints 0. If I enter a 1, it prints 1. If I enter a 2, it prints 2. 3 leads to 3. But 4 leads to unknown. In fact, any value besides 0, 1, 2, and 3 leads to a result of unknown. The reason for that is this default case. We specifically check if x is equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3, and anything else jumps to default and executes that code instead. Now you may have noticed that there are break statements in all of the cases except for the default one. A break makes sure that after executing the code, we jump out of the switch to resume after that closing curly brace. But if we leave them out, then we remain where we are at that execution point and continue going through subsequent cases. For example, if I comment out this break command and run the code, then entering a value of 1 still only prints out 1. But entering a value of 0 prints out 0 and 1. What happened was that we jump to the zero case, print the zero out, and then we do not break and therefore continue on to execute the next line of code. This is obviously a potential source of many errors, but it can also be very useful in certain situations. For example, I've just added a series of cases case 13, case 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And all of these will print out the result teen. So if x is 13, we will jump to the 13 case and then fall through all of the following cases, which do not have break statements, to execute the code for teen. Similarly, any of these other values will cause us to print and then break out of the switch. It's also possible to put some extra code in these cases that applies only to them and the cases that follow. So 14 leads to teen, 16 leads to teen, and in the 18 case, I could add some extra code that distinguishes it from the lower team. So now for cases 18 and 19, we'll print adult followed by teen, whereas 13 through 17 will only print teen. 18 leads to 18, 19 leads to adult and teen. 19 leads to adult and teen. But 17 only prints out teen. Clearly, this is a flexible and useful control structure as long as one is knowledgeable enough to use it responsibly. The Java version of the switch case behaves in much the same way. However, the C sharp version of the switch case construct has some added restrictions. Here I have copy pasted the switch case statement from our C++ code into a C sharp program and also replaced all the C out and C in commands with 
appropriate IO commands for C-sharp. However, there are still syntax errors. If you hover over this, it says that we cannot fall through from one case label, namely case 19, to another. And down near the bottom, where we have the default case, it says control cannot fall out of switch from the final case label default. So even though there's nothing following the default case, C sharp requires us to have some sort of explicit escapes from that case. Now we don't have errors anywhere else because these break statements take care of jumping out of those bits of code. But for default, if I add a break, this will satisfy that error. But I still have the error here in case 19. I want to execute the code that appears after case 17 because I want to print both adult and teen. I can't simply break because that will exit the switch statement and not print the teen at all. Instead, I use a go to command. By telling the code to go to case 17, I will get the same effect as I had in the previous program. I'll jump here after printing out adult and also print out teen. Now thankfully, I don't have to have go to cases in all of my empty cases. C sharp does still allow 18 to fall through to 19 and 13 through 16 to fall through to case 17, but only because I have not put any code within those specific cases. When I run the code, we see that entering 18 prints out both adult and teen, whereas printing out 17 only prints out teen. And if I print out larger numbers, I will get the result unknown, as I did before, from this default case. Common Lisp also has a variety of constructs similar to the switch case. This is merely one of them. As before, we read in a value from the console. We use the case keyword, and we are checking the value of x. And if x is 0, we execute this code. If it's 1, we execute this code. And if it's none of these values, 0 through 3, we execute this code here. So if we run this, we'll see that entering a value of 0 gives us the output of 0, a 1 gives us a 1, a 3 gives us a 3, and anything outside of our bounds, such as 4, leads to unknown. But what if we want to have multiple cases corresponding to the same code being executed as we had in C++ and C Sharp? We can accomplish this by having a list of possible options. So now if I run this code and enter 13, it'll print teen. I'll get the same result if I enter 15. The reason is that this list contains all the values that map to this code being executed. So we have multiple possible values of x leading to the same code being executed. However, we cannot have a case that falls through to another case. So if we want to have a special case for 18 and 19, we'll need to remove those values from this case and then make it so that the 18-19 case prints both the word adult and the word teen, as we'll see right here. So now that I've modified this code, we have a case for 18 and 19 that prints adult, a carriage return, and then the word teen, whereas 13 through 17 prints teen. And we can see here that when I run this with 18, I get adult and teen being printed out. Same thing with 19, but if I run it with 17, I only get the word teen. However, this is once again a fairly unusual way to write code and list. If we're using functional style, then we wouldn't have commands that print to the console in each of these cases. Rather, we would treat the case construct as a function because, like anything in list, this returns a value. So I'm going to remove all the print statements 
and instead return a result, which I'll then assign to a variable. Here, I've restructured the code so that I'm no longer using the printc command inside of my case. All I'm doing is specifying the value of the string that is returned for each of these cases. And in the case of 18 and 19, I actually return a list which contains adult and teen. Note that when you have a list, you need to specify that with a single quote to distinguish it from a function call. So if I run this code now and enter in a value of 3, the 3 will be printed down here where I say print C result, but the value was retrieved from the case and saved in the variable result because this call to case returns the value. Similarly, if I enter 18, then I print out the list of adult and teen because that is what was returned here. So it seems that common list is every bit as flexible as C++ and C Sharp, although requires a bit of a different mindset.